So what's up? It's your boy, Paul P. I serve God. I'm not God. This is just my opinion. And welcome to another episode of Nothing to Something. Let's get it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so happy to be here doing this new episode of From Nothing to Something. Man, it feels good. The last couple of episodes, um, we've been doing a lot of interviews. So, uh, you know, I haven't been doing any episodes on nothing, something, just giving game here and there. You know what I'm saying? So um, it feels so good to be here today, to be able to give you guys a new episode of From Nothing to Something. And I believe we got a really really good one today but before that you know how we like to do it here what's your boy rocking today hey shout out to my guys at dukes my boy mike always make sure your boy is fly and looking good and ready for the game you know what i'm saying you know you know <laughs> hey man i just like to dress up man your boy like to stay nice and clean you know also run a business, so I always stay with the button-ups and the suit jackets and things like that, you know? So, you know, just like to stay right, you know? So, um, another thing, too, I'm going to give a stock of the day. And I said this stock before, but I'm going to say it again because I'm telling you, it. I feel, you know, this is not financial advice, but I feel it's going to really take off. And that is Coinbase ticker symbol C-O-I-N. So, you went to the stock game a little bit, go check it out. Go look at it. You know, it's some, some really good people invested into it. And I think it's really going to take off in the next two, three years. You know, so be looking at the stocks and check out Coinbase when you do. You know? <laughs> so now let's get to business. Today's topic is going to be why some of my point of views are different than the manosphere about men and women. Why are, my some, why are some of my point of views different when it comes to the manosphere world when talking about men and women? Well, let's see. You know, a lot of you have heard of the manosphere, right? If you're on YouTube, I'm sure you've heard of the Manosphere. You know, people like, you know, Kevin Samuels, O'Shea Jackson, Fresh and Fit, you know, Coach Greg. A lot of different people are a part of the Manosphere, you know. Um, and I would say a lot of them have fairly good content, you know. Like, I don't think any of them, you know, um, don't have good content. They all have really, really good content. And I look at a lot of their content, you know. Um, but But I really think that, a lot of their views are different than some of the views that I have. And I just want to talk about those differences today. So um, I, I'll just start with them. Um, so there are a lot of topics that have been highlighted on social media and predominantly on YouTube discussing issues that men are having with women and feminist groups in regards to women doing the following. Okay. And like I said, this is said in a lot of manosphere groups. So this is some of the things that they're saying are issues in regards to women when it comes to men. The first one is becoming and wanting to be more independent. We do have a lot of independent ladies out there. <laughs> the next one is they're primarily initiating breakups. 
whether that's boyfriend girlfriend breakups or divorce breakups, they're primarily are the ones initiating it. Not wanting to get married in their 20s, waiting until their 30s when their chances for marriage drops. That's a tough one. Next one is how they're looking for high value men who are making over six figures a year. Next one is not respecting men who are making the average salary. <laughs> Next one is being told to hold out for hope when men are told and taught differently. <laughs> Next one is they're putting their careers first. Okay. The next one is how they're more masculine now than in the past. Basically, what they're saying with that is, you know, our grandmothers and great grandmothers and great great grandmothers were more feminine, less masculine. And nowadays, I guess they're saying more women are more masculine. Okay. The next one is being overweight. Another one. They're saying more women nowadays than the old days are more overweight. The next one is how now they're wanting more equal partnerships over the man being the leader. Oh, is that a fact, ladies? I'm asking, is that a fact? So um, these are just some of the topics in regards to the reasons that a lot of men channels, particularly men from the Manosphere group, have been blowing up on YouTube with men telling men what to watch out for and women. And today I wanted to discuss and speak a little bit about why my message is somewhat different from theirs in the context in, in the context of what I am telling men. So um, basically I'm saying that my message, I talk to men just like they talk to men, right? But my message is just a little bit different. I focus on different things, you know? Um, but with that being said, um, for, first and foremost, I wanna say I don't disagree with everything that is being said in the Manosphere groups. Um, I'm a man and I think it is important for the ladies to at least hear more of what men got to say in our feeling because the only way we can come together better is by listening to one another. I think that's very important, you know? So I do think that no matter what, women should hear what men got to say. I mean, after you hear it, you can take it how you want it, but at least hear, you know, um, I do also feel like the man is very good. That's what I'm saying. We have some similarities that I'm going to say in the past 10, 15, you know, 20 years, women definitely have been heard and rightfully so. I just think that we're now at the place where men have to be heard just as much as women. So I do agree with that, you know, so I have no issues with the conversations, right? Now, what I don't agree with is the focused conversations about the distaste of women in their decision making when there is far more important things that we should be focusing on in regards to talking to men. You know, um, I think that a lot of times conversations go too far, you know, in the manosphere groups and, and other people who speak on, you know, women that are men. Um, because I think that as men, we should focus on the growth of men in, in, in our communities and when it comes down to the next generation of men. So that's why I say it's kind of going too far when you start talking about the distaste and, and decision making of women, because I don't feel like we should really be directing our attention towards that. You know, um, so with all that being said, these are the things that I will be speaking on today. You know, um, when it comes down to 
why I focus on different things than the Manosphere group do in regards to talking to men. So to start off, um, you who don't know about my channel, you know, people out there who do not know really anything about my channel, I like to speak on things men should be focused on in regards to their growth. All right. Specific point. I like to speak to men, men solely, only men about their personal one on one growth. That's what my channel mainly focuses on. And it's growth in regards to being more financially free, which I think that is um, very important. Um, focusing on their physical and mental health. We have a lot of issues in those areas. Owning more businesses in our communities, getting into stocks and real estates. That's very important. Getting into stocks, getting into real estate groups, you know, things like that. Then being, um, then building their foundations by focusing on preparing to taking care of a family one day by knowing the three P's, which is a protector, provider, and a producer. These are the things that are my focus in regards to talking to men. I think that before any man could really think about anything dealing with a woman, these are the things that men should be focusing on. Their growth. You get what I'm saying? Three Ps. What you want to do? Getting into stocks, getting into real estate, you know, starting a business, you know, whatever, having two, three jobs, whatever it is. That is what I feel a man focus should be on. In regards to their growth. Another thing I, I do on the channel, um, I also do interviews with a lot of men who have built their foundations to be very successful, going from nothing, meaning poverty, or didn't have much in life in their childhood to having a lot of success as an adult. You know, I've interviewed people like Tweet, you know, from Next, um, um, my uncle JP Ramsey, who have a uh, uh, an accountant slash business manager company where he, you know, um, does business management for a lot of celebrities, you know, Morris Chestnut, LT Hutton, you know, and more. Um, also interviewed Billy Moss, who manages Next and also have produced for um, artists like LMA, LMAO and, um, I mean, LMA, I'm sorry, LMA, um, um, Adina Howard and more. Um, you know, and things like that. So I've done a lot of different interviews with those type of men who basically, um, you know, build a very strong foundation, you know, and um, I speak to those men because be, having a channel where I'm directing my attention towards men, I think these men could give the tools that a lot of the men need to understanding how to grow, you know, so, um, and those things are important to me because um, the world I came from, I didn't see a lot of success for my elders. So I thought it was important to put a message out there showing the young men that no matter where you come from, it can be done and success can be had if you focus in the right directions. This is why I focus on men in building in the men community when it comes down to their growth. So I think that should be the main focus right now in regards to men before even thinking about relationships, right? So, you know, growing up, and a lot of men have been through this, not just myself, you know, um, but this is really important in our community, right? Growing up, I wasn't taught um, how to be a man coming from a single parent household that didn't have much. And once I learned how to be a man and built my own successful foundation, I felt the way to give back, especially when so many men are failing tremendously, was to give them the game and the steps on how to do it if they're willing to learn. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is why I focus on men and talk to a lot of men. I come from the communities where men were failing and men are failing even worse than. When I was a teenager, then when I was in my early 20s, men are taking even a further back step now, you know? And at that time, when I was younger, I didn't see too many men who had anything successful going on in their lives. And that's because they probably wasn't taught, you know, 
the right steps and things like that. So no shade to anybody. I'm just saying it's got it's gotten even worse. So this is why I focus on the men. And when I say if they're willing to learn, again, I mean if the men are willing to learn. And I point that out because the majority of men don't want to learn. Or they feel they have the answers. This is men, ego, pride. You know, they may have a lot of what I just said, ego and pride and have no drive on putting in the work to create a solid foundation that a woman and kids can stand on one day with them. It's not a lot of men who are ready for that. Let's be real. I'm just very realistic. This is why I focus on men. I'm very realistic. We talk about relationships and marriage and all of that, but who are we talking about? 5% of the men who are ready for that? Because if 10% are in this category, at least half of that percentage is already married, right? So we're talking about 5% of men who are even stable enough and ready enough to even get married. Why are we focused on anything else if that's the case? You got to think about it, man. You got to really think about it. You know, um, I'm a person growing up who saw a lot of unhappy marriages, you know, growing up, saw a lot of unhappy marriages, you know, where a lot of trauma was brought to the kids and a lot of the men were not handling their business the right way, which created depression all around them and their families that spread it down to the kids, which later ended up in divorces. You know, we like to talk about percentages. Let's talk about the divorce rate. I think between the time I was a kid and now, I probably saw in both of my families combined, and I have a lot of family members. My grandparents on my dad's side alone had 17, 18 kids. It's over 90 of his grandchildren with the greats. My mom's side, you know, um, my grandma has six kids and it's over like 30 of us cousins and things like that. And I could probably say it's about four marriages that I saw last from the time I was a child until now. So divorce, divorces is big. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, with those divorces, most of the men remarried and started their second lives, not having no problem ever finding another woman, you know? Um, and right now I'm talking about the majority in the world. Most of the men who got divorces are, had went through separations, remarried and started their second lives. That's a fact. Not having no problem ever finding another woman. But those first set of kids were left not knowing much about life, where most became lazy and strive for nothing. And the woman who got the divorce would never, most of the time, remarry again, becoming very depressed and solely focused on being available to their now grown kids whenever they needed it. We know when it comes down to it, you know, uh, what do we say? What do we hear about all the time on a lot of these channels when they talking to women? A lot of the, the kids in my generation were raised in single parent households, you know. Um, so I understand why a lot of women were told go out there and focus on, you know, having education and things like that because they know what they went through. Their mothers know what they went through, not having no education and going through that divorce and being left alone with their hands up like, hey, I got nothing now. All I got is my kids. So let me do whatever I have to do to install this in my kids. To be real with you, if the men were around at that time, they would have then been able to install in their daughters, hey, be prepared to be a wife one day. So we can't sit down and talk about the women negatively when a lot of men need to be taught how to be leaders and do things the right way in regards to focusing on themselves, growing physically, mentally, and financially so they could be prepared to know how to lead a family to stay together and not go through the divorces and breaking up the kids in the households. You get what I'm saying? You know, um, 
you know, that is basically the life I've seen and the life you live when you come from some urban communities. You know, these are just facts. You know, I'm just stating the facts that most people who are on here that, you know, and I'm talking about content creators, right? You know, um, whether it's Manosphere or whoever. Most people who are content creators that come from middle America or two parent households, to me, can never speak on these topics because they didn't come from this world where 78% of black Americans have come from. A lot of you haven't came from that world to be speaking on some of these stats and speaking on facts behind why women is why women are moving this way or that way when it comes down to them going out there and focusing on their their lives, their well being, their careers, trying to grow in their lives. You know, like you don't understand the background. We're not, do we not understand? We're never talking about the background that led to a lot of these things. Because if we did, you would have to add a man at some point in that. But a lot of these content creators are smart. <laughs> they know, hey, let's start at this point and talk about what the woman is doing wrong. And bam, we got a hit channel. You know what I'm saying? So I know what's going on, but I'm just breaking down my side of it today to really just speak on why I speak the way I speak and why I think the way I think. You know, um, one of the things I hear some YouTube creators say that I want to touch on, you know, is saying that women choose welfare, Section 8, and government assistance over men in these communities, which is urban communities. But that's false. This is one of the first things I wanted to really get into. That's really false, especially when men were in these households, right, hustling to beat the system with their woman, trying to get this assistance for the most part. Us men, we were in these households. And a lot of times, whether the man was married to the woman or not, believe me, it was a man in there controlling that most of the time. This is what I've always seen living and growing up in these communities. Why are we sitting back saying that women chose welfare and Section A over the men? That ain't a fact. I'm not going to say who stated that, but I'm sure that person didn't come from these communities because you would know that is false, brother. That's false. The men were in the household. The men were counting those food stamps. They was they they was making sure that section they went through, you know. The men know what they were doing. You got to remember something when it comes down to men and women. Women will follow a man that they love. A lot of these things on how to do X, Y, and Z came from the men guiding the women in these communities. Hey, this is how we're going to get Section A set up. You're going to file as a single parent, bam, and whenever they come to check the housing or, or when they check the paperwork, whatever, it's going to be like, I'm not even there. I know the game. <laughs> these are the things we're not talking about. These And these are facts. So if you're not in those communities sitting down with those individuals asking, hey, how did this happen? Did you push the man out to get this? Or was this something that y'all planned and prepared? You got to know what's going on, man, before you just speak on these things, you know? So for me to hear that was ludicrous. And a lot of these dudes on YouTube messed up because now... It's a well-spoken, educated black man on here speaking the truth that is from these communities who will hold the ones responsible who need to be held responsible, which is the ones who need to step up and become leaders like God made us, which are men. We need to focus on us as men. God put us here as leaders. I said this and I'm going to say it again. When Eve was tempted by the serpent to eat the apple, and she did, 
then was told to go tell Adam to eat the apple. And when she went to tell Adam to eat the apple and he ended up eating it, who did God go and call for in the garden? Did he call for Eve who ate the apple first and tempted Adam or did, she, or did he call Adam who was just minding his, whole, his own business and was told to eat the apple and eventually did? He called for Adam. He didn't even pay attention to Eve. He called for Adam. He said, Adam, why did you eat the apple? Adam tried to snitch. She told me. <laughs> didn't matter because he told Adam as the leader this is what I don't want you to do so we got to understand something men we are the leaders this is why men should be the focus when it comes down to it period you know when you look deeper into the issues in the family like I have because it's where I, I came from. It's bigger than just blaming women only and telling them that they should be accepting whatever men give them. And I will continue to talk about why I strongly disagree with that and focus harder on the men becoming leaders, working like leaders, providing like leaders, and building up their families like leaders. I will continue to talk in that direction, you know? To me, that should be the focus and the only focus right now in our communities and everywhere. Because it's not a huge percentage in regards to men being leaders. Let's talk about that fact. Let's put statistics on that. How many men are able to even be leaders? You know, I haven't really got into that right now, but we got to understand something. 70% of men out here are making the average. That automatically, to me, disqualify, disqualify you as being able to provide for an entire household, which make you not a leader. And we're going to get more into that, but we got to really look at the facts and statistics on how many men are actually ready for the women you guys are talking to trying to have be prepared to be wives. What's the percentage on that? Why we're not talking about that? Interesting. Let's continue on. So first, in regards to men, what I want to talk about is the finances, right? Proverbs 18.9, whoever is slack in his work, right? Is a brother to him who destroys. Whoever is slack in his work, slacking, slacking on your work, is a brother to him who destroys. You slackers are brothers with destroyers. Whew. I got I'm, 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 I'm gonna break it down for y'all today. All right. So let's go off a little facts and statistics, like a lot of you guys like to do. All right, let's do that for a second, right? Right now, the average salary for men is forty five thousand a year, right? We all know that. We don't have to break it down, but I will say that a man can't even afford to take care of himself making forty five thousand a year. And I think every man know that. That's a fact. You know, um, that's the first reason why we can't compare the 60s, 70s and 80s to now, because the cost of living is very different. Living in a projects making that you're going to be spending most of your check after paying your other bills. Probably the whole thing is going to be gone. That probably is going to add up to a little bit over 50. So already you're not even able to live in a projects by yourself, let alone taking care of a wife and a family. So why are we telling men anything bad about women who are trying to have a career and take care of themselves when 70% of men can't take care of them and kids anyways? 
they can't do it. So why are we going in that direction anyways? It doesn't make any sense. They're not, <laughs> let me break this down. There are not enough men out here for every woman, first and foremost, to be real. So when 70% of men are already ineligible to date, I personally would tell women to be smart and continue to go make a way for yourself unless a man put a ring on your finger who is financially set. Right? Wouldn't y'all agree with that? And after that, then discussions can be had on how you would prefer her to be a housewife so you could pay all the bills if that's what you want to do and agree on with your woman. Then you can have that conversation in regards to talking about women should be more housewives and focus more on this and that, you know, like. I think that that should be the focus because it's not much of that. We talk about the percentage on women who are not married, especially in the urban community. Let's talk about the percentage of, on men who are not even making over $45,000 a year, which is 70%. So we got to look at all the facts, man, if we're going to really try to break things down, you know? Uh, now let's go in another direction, you know? Um, now I agree that men are leaders. See, it's some things that I agree when it comes down to the men's sphere. I'm a man. So, and not just that, I, I believe in the, in the, in the Bible and the word and things like that. And I know what the words say about men. So I agree that men are leaders and if in a relationship should be respected as leaders in their household, but that's if they're ready for that. Again, if they're ready for that, and what makes a high value woman, I'm just speaking facts, is being with a high value man. I agree with that as well. And look, ladies, please don't get mad. Don't get mad at me, ladies. I will explain. I gave up and stopped believing. Oh, the world around me started crashing. I didn't see the living.